Let's model a slab or a fin like this in ANSYS APDL. I have a slab, one meter long, 0.4 meters in height, and 0.4 meters in thickness, which has, which has a 5,000 heat flux from one end, and the other surfaces are applied to air, or a medium with convection coefficient of 20, and ambient temperature of 32. And the conductivity of the plate, or the slab, is 10. However, I'm going to take advantage of the symmetrical feature of this plate. So I know that across the cross section or the middle section of this um, slab, there is no heat transfer in Y and also there is no heat transfer in Z direction. So basically, I have two planes, one across the Y coordinate and one across the Z coordinate exactly at the center of those, uh, at the center line of the plate where there is no heat transfer in those in Z or Y direction respectively. As a result, I can take, take advantage of that feature and model half of my slab. So instead of going from 0 to 0.4, I'm going to go from 0 to 0.2. And here, I'm going to go from 0 to 0.02 and apply the boundary conditions appropriate for symmetry to reduce the number of elements and nodes in my model. So here's a script I've written and we're familiar with most of the uh, commands used in here. So basically here I finish and clear the database and then start pre-processing. And I'm selecting element type 279. So select element type 279, which is a thermal element, as written in here. And its degrees of freedom are temperature. And the materials that it takes, or material properties it takes, is conductivity, density, and a specific heat. So I've only given conductivity here, set conduction to 10 as material 1, then I'm creating a block. So create a block. Like I said, I'm using half of the width and I mean height and thickness to take advantage of symmetry. So if I copy this portion of the code and APDL, this is why we'll have a block like this. So what I'm going to do is select the nodes after I mesh, select the nodes on this surface and on this bottom surface and set that there is no heat flow from or, or across these um, cross sections and Y and Z direction appropriate to their planes. So if I come to ANSYS APDL, I'm setting the element size to one centimeter. So set element size to 0 0.01 and then activate the appropriate element, appropriate real section or real constant in appropriate material model and mesh volume one. So let's see what happens here. So if I go there and apply it, I see that my um, mesh is created. Now I can come here and apply the boundary conditions. The first thing I want to do is to select nodes at location x equals 0. So select nodes at x equals 0, which would correspond to nodes, if I look from this direction, zoom all, these nodes along that lane line. So if I do that, and 
select it, do and plot and do a 3D view, you can see that only the plane or the nodes at x equals 0 are selected for me. Now, you can come here and apply the heat flux. So SF is a surface force to the selected nodes, and H flux is short for heat flux, and the value is 5,000. So apply 5,000 heat flux to nodes. And then I'm selecting everything. So if I copy these lines and put them here and do e plot, see that the SF is applied to those nodes, but I can't see it yet. But if I do SF list, I can see that the heat flux is applied to some of the nodes. Next, I want to apply the symmetry boundary condition. So what I do first is I select nodes at z equals 0. And then I also select nodes at y equals 0. And by also I mean that I've put a in the n cell input. So n cell s selects and n cell a also selects. So if I just run these two lines in here and do n plot and move around, you can see that only certain nodes are selected. And then by using the F command, I'm saying no heat transfer through these nodes. And then I'm selecting everything. Select everything. So basically, I'm saying that because they're the symmetry lines or symmetry planes, heat doesn't transfer through them, normal to them, actually. So if I uh, copy these lines and put them there and do eplot, see a 3D view. Now the next step is to apply the conduction or convection. And the way I do it is I select the remaining nodes on those areas. So select nodes at y is equal to 0 0.02. Select or also select nodes at y is equal to or z is equal to 0.2 and then also select nodes at x equals 1. Then apply convection. So convection takes two values basically SF is the surface force all for the selected nodes. Conv uh, CONV is short for convection. The first one is the, is the convection coefficient and the second one is the ambient temperature as shown in here. So if I find the S command or SF command in the command section, SF and find convection under thermal and I have to find the values that if I read, it should give me what values it takes. So by reading these values or these um, um, information, I know that the first input is the convection coefficient and the second one is the temperature and then I'm selecting everything again. So if I input these lines, 
and run the finish this is what's going to happen to my model so the areas on the top surface on this end and on this end are applied or are exposed to air now I can start solution and solve and then finish and here start post-processing and plot nodal temperature so PL is short for plot and so is for sh short for nodal solution and temperature is a solution that we want to plot. If I copy these lines, put it in ANSYS, the solution is done and the temperature is shown along the length of the fin. So it's at 32 in here, which is the temperature of the air. And as you can see, the temperature of the uh, slab or fin is changing along its length. Let's take a look at the gradient or the, the vector plot. So if I come to plots, vector plot by define temp thermal flux and let's take a look at from this side. As you can see it's moving outward which is basically the temperature or the, or the heat is moving from this base towards the air. So with this example, we'll learn how to create a, uh, or how to model a fin with heat flux and symmetry for temperature degree of freedom and also applied convection. And, I, and we saw the temperature gradient along the length of the fin.